Hello, hello everybody. Hey, thanks for watching. We got an experiment for you guys today. So over the last couple years, we have contemplated building a berm out here in several different locations around the property. Obviously we do a lot of shooting, so uh, stopping bullets out here is really important. You don't just wanna be sending stray rounds off into the woods that could obviously be dangerous for a number of reasons. So we contemplated bringing out heavy machinery and moving dirt around and building actual berms. And then I started seeing more of these. These are railroad ties. They weigh up to like a couple hundred pounds a piece. They're super dense, super heavy pieces of wood. And I've even seen other YouTubers who use these as their backstops as well. So we decided to skip the berm for now and give these a shot. And we went down and spent a couple hundred bucks. And as you can see, uh, we got a couple pretty big walls out of it. Now, this one here is older railroad ties that we got from like neighbors and stuff. You can find these things literally everywhere, at least around here you can. But this wall over here is actually all new ones that we got from the hardware store and they are dense. They have to weigh at least 200 pounds a piece, super thick, super heavy, and I imagine they're pretty good at stopping bullets. So we've had these up for a while now. I'm sure you guys have seen them in my last few videos. So I know they definitely stop some bullets, but I thought, why don't I come out, bring you guys out here with me and we make a video and find out how bulletproof is a railroad tie and is our backstop sufficient. So the guinea pig for today's video, the one we're gonna shoot is one off of the new stack. This is a very heavy, very dense piece of wood. And I'm hoping that it's also really good at stopping bullets. Let's see. So I could probably be a little bit closer, but just to be safe, I'm gonna start back here, especially with the smaller calibers and then maybe we'll move up in a little bit. But as you probably guessed, we're starting with the 22 long rifle out of the Taurus PT-22. By the way, I have a paper plate that I stapled to the back, so if anything goes through, we should be able to see it on there, so. If that went through, this is gonna be a pretty short video. Our entrance hole is right there, and nothing out the back. That's always my biggest fear with these kind of videos, that the first caliber we shoot will get through, and then the video's ruined. Next up, the nine millimeter full metal jacket out of probably my favorite pistol that I own right now, the Sig Sauer P365XL. It's making a little cloud of dust or smoke or something every time I shoot it. Oh, it's pepper ball residue. I can smell it now. So there's our nine millimeter entrance hole right there. And once again, nothing out the back. So the only thing that sucks about this is usually I can tell like how close our bullets are to getting through. But with this, I have no way of telling. So I don't know if they're one inch into the railroad tie or almost coming out the back because I can't see in there. All right, we're working our way up. This is the 40 Smith & Wesson out of the Glock 23. Trying not to put them in the same hole. I made a good size hole on the front and it hit right on a crack. So maybe that one sneaked through. All right, here's our 40 Smith & Wesson entrance hole right there. And you can see the crack along that railroad tie and our 40 landed right on that. So let's see, nope, nothing came out the back. This might start to get interesting. The 40 is not an easy bullet to stop. I'm impressed. All right, we're stepping into manly territory now. This is the 357 SIG out of the Glock 23 with the conversion barrel. By the way, I moved our plate over a couple feet so we're not shooting all in the same spot. So This gun usually shoots a couple inches high, so I gotta aim low. Hope I don't miss it. Perfect. Entrance hole and no exit hole. So a lot of you guys have been aggressively bugging me for a year or two now to get a 10 millimeter pistol. And I'm happy to say, thanks to Turtle Like Tactical, we finally got one. So next, we're shooting the 10 millimeter. Look at that pretty bullet. And we're shooting it out of the Glock 20. This is actually gonna be my very first time ever shooting a 10 millimeter. I've never shot one of these, so let's see how it goes. I've heard they kick a little bit. Not terrible compared to the 44 Magnum, it feels like nothing. So that mark on the tops from a few days ago, I was shooting pumpkins, so don't pay no attention to that. But our 10 millimeter went in right there, just above our 357 SIG. And once again, nothing came out the other side. So I gotta say, that is pretty impressive. These are some pretty big pistol calibers that we're shooting at this thing. And like I said, I have no idea how close they are to getting through, but so far, nothing has made it all the way through. So I really don't wanna do this, but I guess I have to. Next step, we have the 44 Magnum, which is a really powerful round, but it's the gun that makes this so brutal. So this is the Taurus 444 Ultralight 44 Magnum. And I made a video on this recently, and 
it's just a horrible gun to shoot. It's an ultralight 44 Magnum, so you're getting maximum recoil out of this thing, and it's painful. I noticed in the comments, a lot of people were saying that it didn't look that bad, and I was surprised by that myself. It felt a lot worse, but I think it's the rearward punch that I'm getting in the palm of my hand and not so much the muzzle rise. So I guess it doesn't look as bad as it feels, but trust me, it sucks. I'll probably miss the target completely, but. <laughs> Man, thank God I hit it. Woo! I've shot some 44 Magnums and none of them kick as hard as this thing does. Now, of course, there's extreme penetrators and other ammo that's designed to penetrate stuff better, but my goal with this video isn't to get through this thing. It's to shoot ammo that I would normally come out here and shoot and just see what our wall will usually stop. So our 44 Magnum went in right there on the bottom. It's actually one of the better placed shots of the three. Come around to the backside, and once again, it did not come through. Wow. All right, well, all we got left is a couple rifles to try. So I'm actually gonna start with the AK since I think the AR probably has a better chance of getting through. So first we'll do this, then we'll try the AR-15. But this is the 7.62 by 39, once again, out of the AK-47. And this one does have the Franklin Armory binary trigger in it. Maybe we'll try it out after we shoot it. put a couple on our wood so put your guesses in the comments on this one I'm leaning towards yes just because it's obviously a huge step up from the pistols and when we were shooting uh, the bulletproof glass over there the AK was easily getting through it when all these pistol calibers were not even close so I think it will probably get through but I think that anything that does get through this will be greatly diminished by the time it exits out the back because it's obviously super strong so let's see there is our entrance hole from the 7.62 by 39. Yes, it did make it all the way through. Hard telling, maybe it looks like it hit right there, up underneath our wall of railroad ties here. It's gonna be really hard for me to see if it came out the backside. Um, like I said, these are not in the best shape but i actually don't see like a clean exit hole back here anywhere it would probably be pretty big or at least kind of chipped up but i don't see an exit hole on the back side of this wall so the ak-47 did make it through like i said i thought that it probably would some of these rifles are pretty powerful but it does look like it stopped and the wall behind it so all right so i'm still going to shoot the 223 obviously out of my sexy AR-15 here, but I have the bulletproof glass behind the railroad tie, and usually a 223 will easily zip through that bulletproof glass. So I wanna see after it passes through the railroad tie, what will it do to that glass? Will it stop in it? Will it go all the way through? How much is the railroad tie slowing down these rifle rounds? So let's see. So this is a really surprising result, not what I expected at all, but you can see right here where our 223 went in, obviously a much smaller hole. And if you look close, the camera probably won't focus that close, but it like twisted the wood when the bullet was spinning through there. Uh, but that is our entrance hole from the 223. And then on the back side, you can see no exit hole. The 223 from the AR-15 did not make it through and the 762 by 39 did. So I'm not really sure, I'm leaning towards the 223 probably hit a hard spot in the railroad tie and if we shoot it again, it will probably get through, but I don't know, we're gonna try. All right, AR attempt number two. All right, so our second 223 hit just below the first one. And on the back side here, you can see once again, nothing came out the other side now i actually saw a little bit of like debris fall from the bottom of the railroad tie so at first i thought maybe it like curved and exited out the bottom and it did it did curve and exit out the bottom of the railroad tie so this is me cutting in from the future i actually finished up that clip did the outro signed off and went home and watched some of that footage and something definitely hit that glass and the leaves were impacted uh, really hard as well so that 556 definitely curved 
and exit it out the bottom of the railroad tie, which is kind of one of the disadvantages of the lighter weight 5.56 when they hit barriers like railroad ties or you know something hard like that. They tend to curve or yaw or break apart. They're just so light and so fast that they're more easily affected by stuff like that. But technically, it did not stop in the railroad tie like I thought it did, and it did curve and exit out the bottom. Now, I looked on the glass. There is no impact on the glass. So well, let's just say there's no hole on the glass. There is something that I didn't notice before. I'll try to show you guys if you can see that right there. It almost looks like a bullet hit that sideways. And there's even a streak on the glass pointing towards the ground. Like maybe that 556 five, curved and kind of hit it, you know, while it was tumbling through the air and probably hit the ground after that. But I looked around, obviously I can't find the bullet. I wish I could, I would show you guys if I could find it, but unfortunately I can't, but I did think it was necessary to come back out here and clear that up for you guys. Now, if that was a railroad tie on our wall here, it probably would have either curved down and hit another tie underneath it and stopped the bullet in that one, or it took a, such a sharp turn that it would have hit the ground behind it and rendered that bullet pretty much useless and either way they kind of would have done their job but it technically did not stop in the railroad tie like we thought it did well that is going to do it for me today guys thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed the video this was kind of a personal experiment honestly but i had to come out here and see uh, what my railroad tie walls would actually stop and i gotta say i'm impressed obviously the 762 by 39 made it through but after seeing what it did to those ar-15 rounds completely stopping the first one and pretty much rendering the second one useless. I highly doubt that that 762 had too much left on it when it passed through the other side. Obviously it would still be dangerous, but not nearly as dangerous as just shooting off blindly into the woods, obviously. So either way, interesting result. And I gotta say railroad ties, are pretty dang bulletproof. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please let me know down in the comments and hit that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.